All right. How you doing? I'm Jeffrey Keith, a.k.a. The Salty Boomer, and this is the Aimless News Report for Thursday, January 5th, 2023. And this is why electric cars are a non-starter, a dead end. The lithium and cobalt is not a renewable source. This is what a lithium mine looks like. Way greener than oil for cars, right? And let's put a stop to that rumor that these are fossil fuels. Fossil fuels is a made-up lie to imply scarcity. This is how these cabal operates. They imply scarcity. The earth produces oil naturally. We will never run out. Electric cars are a total dead end. They can't even, they don't have anywhere near enough charging stations. And even if they did have enough charging stations, where do these dumb motherfuckers think that fuel comes from? Electric cars, batteries do not generate electricity. They store electricity. It has to be made from something, coal or oil or something. But this is what these green idiots don't understand. All right, moving on. Zelensky expands his crackdown on Ukrainian media. President Zelensky has signed a new bill into law which strengthens government control over public access to news, including print and online sources. Which brings me to an interesting question. There's about 40 million people in Ukraine. Let's say 20 million of them have a cell phone. Probably more. Why are there not cell phone videos of the dramatic war all over the internet? Hmm, I wonder. Moving on, Pfizer's history of fraud, corruption, and using Nigerian children as human guinea pigs. Connie Koa the Great, with a great substack here. I encourage you to go read this yourself, but we'll go through it briefly. Pfizer's long history of criminal behavior in 1992. They agreed to pay between $165 million and $215 million to settle lawsuits arising from the fracturing of its bjork shiley convexo concave heart valve, which killed a bunch of people. In 1994, Pfizer agreed to pay $10.75 million to settle Justice Department claims that the company lied to get federal approval for that same mechanical heart valve. In 1996, Pfizer administered an experimental drug, hmm, sound familiar? During a clinical trial on 200 children in Nigeria, but never told the parents that their children were the subjects of an experiment. In 2002, Pfizer agreed to pay $49 million to settle allegations that the drug company defrauded the federal government and 40 states by charging too much for its cholesterol treatment. Another lie. There's no such thing as high cholesterol. You want your cholesterol to be high, believe me. In 2004, Pfizer agreed to plead to guilty to two felonies and paid $430 million in penalties to settle charges that it fraudulently promoted their drug for unapproved uses. In 2008, the New York Times published an article entitled, Experts Conclude Pfizer Manipulated Studies. Pfizer delayed the publication of the negative studies, spun negative data to place it in a more positive light, and controlled the flow of clinical research data in order to to promote its epilepsy drug. Sound familiar? That same year, the company paid $430 million to settle federal criminal civil claims that one of its subsidiaries had promoted the drug for unapproved uses. Wow, sounds just like now. In 2009, Pfizer was fined $2.3 billion, then the largest health care fraud settlement and the largest criminal fine ever imposed in the United States. Pfizer pled guilty to misbranding the painkiller Bextra with the intent to defraud or mislead. Sound familiar? In 2009, Pfizer paid $750 million to settle 35,000 claims that its drug Resulin was responsible for 63 deaths and dozens of liver failures. Now they've got Remdesivir that does the same thing. In 2010, Pfizer was ordered to pay $142 million in damages for violating federal anti-racketeering law by its fraudulent sale and marketing of Neurontin for uses not approved by the FDA. In, 2020, in 2010, 
the New York Times published an article entitled, Pfizer Gives Details on Payments to Doctors. Pfizer admitted that it paid about $20 million to 4,500 do doctors and other medical professionals for consulting and speaking on its behalf in the last six months of 2009. Pfizer also paid $15 million to 250 academic medical centers and other research groups for clinical trials in the same period. So that continues to this day with our COVID vaccines and other treatments that they have buried. They buy off the doctors, they buy off the universities, and they buy off the media. And that's how this works. And this goes on and on. Illegally bribing 5,000 doctors. Pay $75 million to families harmed during the 1996 drug trial. Bribe doctors and other health care professionals. Nearly 10,000 women at uh, hormone replacement therapy drug cause, caused breast cancer. See, they give you this stuff that causes you to get sick. That's why I call out the CDC, the Centers for Disease Creation and Promotion. In 2013, Pfizer agreed to pay $55 million to settle criminal charges of failing to warn patients and doctors about the risk of kidney disease, kidney injury, and kidney failure. In 2013, Pfizer set aside $288 million to settle claims by people that has drug Chantix, I think that was for quitting smoking, caused suicidal thoughts and severe psychological disorders. In 2014, Pfizer paid $35 million to settle a lawsuit accusing its subsidiary of promoting the kidney transplant drug for unapproved uses. This is only a partial list of the fraud, corruption, and criminality of Pfizer. But this time, this vaccine, mRNA, an experimental gene therapy that has never been used on humans ever before in the history of ever, we're supposed to believe them. And you can't talk about it if you don't. This guy, a guide to an evil empire, Pfizer lawsuits. This guy named Jestry has put a guy, uh, together a guide of lawsuits that is so extensive that he has to put them in alphabetical order. The link is down below. You can check that out for yourself. I don't think we should be having to believe anything, Pfizer says. Emergency Amendment approves continuation of the mandatory C-19 vaccination of non-citizen, non-immigrants traveling to the United States by air. So, Potato Head and his administration, this COVID vaccine was set to expire on January 8th. It has now been extended to April 10th. However, if you want to get around that, just fly into Mexico and walk over. There's no checking anybody that's coming in from the Mexican war, uh, border, you can just walk over. This is just utter nonsense. The United States is one of only two countries, I believe, that I could be wrong about that, but I don't, I don't think so, that still requires people to be vaccinated to fly into the country. However, anybody can cross the border with no checks whatsoever on the southern border. And you know why they are letting all those people in? You know why they're letting all them in. It's so when they cheat in 2024, the numbers will work for them. They need all these people. They don't care about these people. They know they're not even going to vote. They don't give a fuck about that. That's already set up. They got that all taken care of, but don't worry about it. What they need those people for is for their numbers to work because they are getting slammed so hard in actual voting that they have to cheat so much that there, there is more votes than people. So they need these people in the country to cheat. That is why the borders are wide open. U.S. government agency demanded suspension of 250,000 accounts, including journalists and Canadian officials, and no one seems to care. Did Damar Hamlin suffer a freak 1 in 200 million injury that shuts off blood to the brain? Hart may have been struck during 20 millisecond window when it was most vulnerable, doctors say. I say, I don't think so. The Salty Boomer, that's me on Twitter. You can follow me at Salty underscore Boomer. The link is down below in the description. Why would he delete this tweet? This is Dr. Benjamin Eidelman. 
I recently administered Damar Hamlin's COVID booster on 1226. And as a medical professional, I can assure the public he passed all screenings with flying colors. I am in contact with the UCMC staff and will provide any assistance to them. He deleted this tweet after DeMar passed out on the football field on Monday night. The Jets' Max Mitchell is dealing with blood clots, unexpected temporary setback. This is starting to happen and people are getting real fucking nervous. This guy's got blood clots. He's out for the year. Former Jacksonville Jaguars Uchanuqui, now one Neri, sorry about the name there, pal. Big proponent for the Vax, 38 years old, he's retired from the NFL. Big proponent. Okay, so let's get these vaccine mandates and vaccine passports up and running ASAP. We see children die daily from the unvaccinated selfishness. Pregnant women are at risk too. Protect life, mandate the vaccine. Jail anyone who refuses to protect life. This guy wanted you to go to jail if you didn't take an experimental gene therapy and not to rub it in. But here he is again. What kind of an idiot must one be to actually take a dewormer ivermectin, which has absolutely nothing in any study anywhere about using for COVID, but your stupid ass doesn't want to vax? I mean, natural selection takes over at some point, right? Right. And you know what else? That young man in the NFL that collapsed on Monday night. She cannot sue Pfizer or any of the other drug companies. But what she can do, she can sue the Buffalo Bills. She can sue the NFL for making her son take that shot. And she can get a fuckload of money. And I hope she does. Moving on, Colorado plans to send more migrants to New York. Fantastic. What does this dumbass say? Adams. What's his name? Adams something. You know, Adams, the mayor of New York. It is just unfair for local governments to have to take on this national obligation. Well, Mayor Adams, maybe you could talk to that potato head that you call your president and shut down the fucking border. Homeless woman brags about free meals in the Democrat city. This is in Portland. This is a woman who is homeless, and she said all they do is get paid and get high all day. Like being homeless in Portland. It's a piece of cake, really. I mean, that's why you probably got so many out here, because they feed you three meals a day. You don't have to do shit but stay in your tent or party, or if you smoke a lot of dope, you can do that. Um, Mm. What else? What else, Melissa? What else do I say? I'm being interviewed. Um, yeah, it? that's really it. It's like you wake up, you go eat a blanche, get high. Go eat a blanche for lunch, get high. Go eat dinner, get high. <laughs> There's how the Democrat shitholes are taking care of the homeless problem. They pay them, feed them, and let them get high all day. And same thing out in Oregon. Hospital proudly announces expansion of sex change Department. They're proud of it. I don't know who this guy is, but I don't trust him. The Oregon Health and Science University has proudly announced the expansion of their gender affirming services. You know, if you want to affirm gender, you can just look inside your pants. Castration for the purpose of vinyl, vaginoplasty, as well as creating non functional neo penises from the skin and flesh of a forearm. What do you think? Do you want a neo penis? From the skin and flesh of your forearms? How sick are these motherfuckers? All right. I don't know if you heard about this one. But uh, this guy, uh, Mike Huckabee, says, Everyone missed it. Bombshell Huckabee announcement. Supremes could flip the 2020 and boot Biden. So this is Brunson versus Adams. This case is before the Supreme Court tomorrow on Friday. I've covered it before. I just wanted to read go over this the day before it actually is happening. And what they say is these guys did not uh, uphold their duty to protect the Constitution and that they are they want the Supreme Court to throw out all of the people who did not investigate. 
and it's Biden, uh, Kamala, and 385 members of Congress who swore an oath to protect the Constitution and did not do so. However, the merits of this case, in our honest opinion, it does not seem to have any basis in constitutional law. Frankly speaking, as found by the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals in their dismissal, it's frivolous. So I just wanted to point out this is happening, and this case is dead on arrival. So don't get too excited. An alleged intruder enters a home through a window and gets shot dead. This is how they roll in Florida. An alleged intruder entered a Lake County, Florida home through a window of money and was shot dead by a person inside the house. <laughs> there you go. A doctor does not get the outcome he was looking for. I saw, I'm sure you saw this one. This guy drove his Tesla off the side of a cliff. They thought it was an accident. He has been arrested for attempted murder. He drove over a cliff 250 feet down to the bottom, crashing into the rocks and waves below. All four people lived, and he is now being charged with attempted murder. That did not go the way he thought it would. Much like a lot of things in life, isn't that true? All right, let's see what Steve Inman has for us today. Here we go, Chaz and Sharon getting ready for some synchronized diving. Chaz first, oh, oh and Sharon goes down like a pinko chip from the Price is Right. My God, is she okay? Look for something. There she is. She made it. Let's take a quick look at the replay. You can see right here, Sharon and Chaz is just taking the big plunge. And Chaz goes in. She hesitated. She didn't jump. She got scared. Now she's going to smash this lower rope. Head being the gentleman that he is. And man, <laughs> she just takes a Plinko beating on the way down here. Let's see. All right. That's going to do it for this edition of Nameless News. All you people that are still hanging on to your IRAs and 401ks, 401ks with the stock market, you might want to consider switching over to a IRA protected by gold. The stock market lost 10%. You still want to risk that in 2022. So I don't know. I would head on over to protectyourhardearnedmoney.com or click the link below this video in the description to get your free 2023 Wealth Protection Kit. And maybe, just maybe, save your 401k or your IRA by backing it with gold. All right. That's going to do it for this edition of Aimless News. I will see you in the next time. Aloha. <laughs>